Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're hanging out with the river rats. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. You know, across the upper Midwest, there are literally thousands in rivers and streams to fish. And this time of year, the lakes get all the traffic. And sometimes it can get a little bit crowded out there. You want to get away from the crowd? Go and fish a river. There's a diversity of fish to target. Whatever you like to fish for, they're in rivers. Definitely, Troy, and I think the beauty of river fishing is it's visual. We're looking mm. for changes in current, you know, eddies, holes, current mm. seams, bridge pilings, other cover, and that will help you determine the location of fish on any given day. Yeah, and you can also do the research really easy through Google Earth. Zoom in, zoom out. You can find out and see where they are. Uh, let's dive in a little bit deeper. Here's the river rats. Did you know America is home to over 250,000 rivers? Add them up and that's 3.5 million miles of waterway. The longest is the Missouri River at just over 2,500 miles long, but the mighty Mississippi carries more water volume. At its Lake Itasca, Minnesota source, the Mississippi River's flow averages a modest 45 gallons a second, but by the time it reaches New Orleans, the discharge is 100,000 times that, a whopping 4.5 million gallons a second. Yes, big or small, rivers are the lifeblood of our nation, providing drinking water, irrigation, transportation, electrical power, drainage, food, and recreation like fishing. In fact, no matter where you live, chances are you're not too far from a fishable river. It might be a creek with scrappy smallmouth bass or a slow meandering ride through farm fields riddled with holes, wood, and willing trout. or waters thriving with hard-fighting catfish that have gone completely overlooked. Yes, rural or urban, rivers provide a multitude of fishing opportunities the entire calendar year, no boat required. There are big walleye windows in spring and fall in popular waters like the Rainy River, Detroit River, Mississippi, Missouri, and numerous others that promise numbers and trophies and rivers across the country with epic early season runs of white bass that will wear out a fish counter and your arms. But true river rats will tell you that's just scratching the surface. Given the propensity of flowing waters to harbor a wide array of fish species, rivers present mixed bag fishing at its finest. We've heard it a thousand times before. I'm never quite sure what I'll catch in the river. No matter what your favorite fish species, river fishing is just plain fun. Whether you're in a boat, kayak, wading in an old pair of tennis shoes, or fishing from the bank, a rod resting in a fork piece of driftwood. High tech or no tech, there's a reason why river rats prefer fishing moving water. And it's not just to avoid the crowd. If bites are what you're after, rivers definitely deliver. Yes, it's pretty hard to beat rivers for hot summer multi-species fishing. Speaking of summer, right now we've had generally lower water conditions, but the water is cleared up. You know what, unlike winter, right now fish are traveling. They're in shallow, faster water sections. They're looking for oxygen. They're looking for food regardless of species. Yeah, this time of year the fish, their metabolism is really high. They're eating a lot. And what that fast current provides, not only oxygen, but it's food. It's like a constant conveyor belt of food. This Underwater Minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. To the casual observer, rivers appear little more than collected rainwater or snowmelt flowing through the landscape. They drain the surrounding terrain, delivering an ever-increasing buildup of nutrients downstream. To the fish living within them, rivers are conveyor belts of food. Their fertile environments have incredibly high carrying capacities capable of supporting many more fish per acre than most lakes. River levels and current vary dramatically according to weather conditions, delivering a never-ending cycle of highs and lows and fast and slows to the fish living within them. 
Fish react and adjust to these roller coaster conditions by moving substantial distances throughout the year to satisfy their seasonal needs for spawning habitat, food, comfort, and safety. Anglers who adjust to these changes are able to follow the fish and catch them consistently throughout the fishing season. Yes, good river fishermen definitely go with the flow. Yes, reading current is critical when you're river fishing. After this short break, we have our highlight destination feature and the first of our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Without question, my favorite fish to target are trout. Little rivers, little streams, making little pinpoint casts, even if they're like this big, or if they're big browns, like that big. Also rainbows and brooks, it's just fun, so much fun. I know you love trout, Troy. I've seen your videos, they're super exciting with mm -hmm. your ninja gear, catching them across the country on road trips. When I'm fishing the river, I go out fishing for walleyes, but I typically have kids with. So I'm always watching my electronics for marks, maybe big marks, you know, every once in a while you get a big flathead or a school of white bass comes through and that's fun for the entire family. The thing is, some of these spots, everything filters through them. You know, the current seams, the back eddies, it's like a smorgasbord of everything in the river. Yeah, it is. Let's head around the Angling Buzz region for some top river destinations. The Dakota's Missouri River has become synonymous with excellent walleye fishing, but more anglers are also discovering its virtually untapped big brown bass. Angling Buzz field reporter Jason Mitchell recommends five key areas for bronzeback fans to explore this summer. Lake Sharp and Francis Case offer loads of fish to the 20 inch mark. Here, high probability targets include bluffs and sharp breaking shorelines with lots of rock, rubble and sand. On Lake Audubon, shallow rock reefs and islands are a solid bet. For trophy 20 inches and better, Mitchell says Lake Oahe and Sakakawea are hard to beat with their plentiful rock points, sunken islands, and lots of forage. In terms of presentations, tubes, paddle tails, curly tail grubs, drop shot rigs or cranks are top contenders. The Red River of the North is some of the finest channel cat fishing in the entire country. From Wahpeton, North Dakota, through Fargo, Grand Forks, Drayton, all the way to Lake Winnipeg, the channel cats are only getting bigger the farther north you travel. The Drayton Pool offers lots of fish in the near 20 pound category in trophies pushing 25. While Manitoba's Selkirk Pool produces lots of 25 pounders, with channels pushing to the whopping 30 pound mark. In both locations, anglers describe their success not in how many fish are caught, but by the hundreds of pounds boated on a typical day. 
If you're looking to put a beat on big cats this year, check out Angling Buzz field reporter Brad Durek's guide service at braddurek.com. Muskie anglers in the St. Clair River are reporting excellent summer fishing. This 40-mile stretch of river has its share of resident fish, and studies reveal fish movements in and out of the river from Lake St. Clair. Right now, anglers are hitting pay dirt, vertical jigging the river's deep water breaks and ledges with big plastics or an explosive topwater bite on hotter, more humid days. For more details, visit sportfishmichigan.com for guide info. Oh yeah, beautiful. With its unique geology untouched by glaciers, the upper Midwest driftless region offers some of the most picturesque and productive trout streams anywhere in the country. From southwest Wisconsin, southeast Minnesota, and northeast Iowa, the Driftless offers everything from put and take rainbows to naturally reproducing brown trout and brilliantly speckled brookies. In Wisconsin, the Viroqua area presents numerous trout opportunities. In Minnesota, Whitewater State Park offers great camp and fish facilities, and the Iowa region around Decorah is a good place to start. A short three or four weight fly rod in the seven to eight foot class is perfect for the small limestone creeks. For larger streams and rivers like Minnesota's Root, consider pounding the banks with heavier weight rods and streamers for bruiser sized brownies. Another deadly tactic is tossing inline spinners or small rapplers on ultralight spinning combos like St. Croix Trout Series. No matter where you trout fish this summer, Practicing catch and release and selective harvest promises great trout fishing for years to come. The entire driftless region, you know, it's kind of hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. You've got these beautiful limestone creeks, unique geology. You've got brook trout, brown trout, stalker rainbows. You know, from Iowa up through Wisconsin and Minnesota, when I was younger, I camped there a lot and I fished long before I had a boat and, and I had a lot of fun. Hey everybody, Jason Freed here with Leisure Outdoor Adventures. It's mid-July and one word to think about, speed. We have two variables, slow, methodical, or quick, aggressive, and get the reaction bite. We'll start with slow. When going slow, Lindy rigs with leeches, Lindy rigs with a crawler and a float, or slip bobbery. Don't be afraid to go back and find that emergent cabbage and throw slip bobbers with small leeches to find those leech-like walleyes. When you want to move to the other end of the spectrum, go fast, fish in the reaction bite. On the main lake, try working the edges of the reefs, Huddles Reef, Variety Reef, Pelican Reef, some of those areas with number seven or number five shad wraps, especially in the mornings and evenings. That's going to be a great tactic. Otherwise, move out into the mud in those areas, those transition areas, show them lead core uh, with the same kind of crankbaits. Rip and wraps. The rattle attracts fish. It can be aggressive. It's a great way to get a reaction bite. A jig and a plastic or a swim bait of some sort. Or the old standard, as everybody knows, the jigging wrap. Cast it, vertical jig it, snap jig it. It's a great way to cover ground and find aggressive fish who want to bite. Now let's check in with a guy who's on all the fish all the time of Sportfish Michigan, Captain Ben Wolf. It's mid-July here in Michigan, and many anglers are talking about the Lake Michigan King Salmon Fishery. Ports like Muskegon, Grand Haven, Saugatuck, Manistee and even Frankfurt are producing some very nice catches of king salmon right now, including some whoppers topping 30 pounds. Trolling remains the best way to target these king salmon and anglers using a mix of spoons as well as meat rigs are able to boat these feisty Great Lakes salmon. For fly anglers wanting to hit the river, a mouse pattern fished at night is a great way to target big brown trout. Also, during the day, a grasshopper pattern is a great way to target the daytime bite. For bass anglers across the state, we have lots of options, even though it's the dead of summer right now. Spinner baits fished in the wind are a great tool to locate and catch summertime fish that are aggressive, and fishing the deep break down in the deep water with a drop shot rig is a great option looking for those deep water bites. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call, or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com.
If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. The can for every engine. Help your engine run smoother and last longer with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Just pour it in. Seafoam Motor Treatment works to clean, lubricate, and protect your entire fuel system, no matter what moves you. Gas, diesel, marine, small engines, or power sports. Seafoam Motor Treatment is safe and easy to use. Make the proven choice. Seafoam Motor Treatment, available everywhere automotive products are sold. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now let's drop in on the Alexandria region with Ben Hiddle. I'm out here doing some power jig wrapping, getting after these walleyes in the summertime. It's pretty fun on these uh, Rapala jigging wraps. Out here on main lake structures, looking for these big fish, just driving around, reading them, dropping jig wraps on them in 20 to 25 feet of water. Can't be any funner than that. Put this one back. What I've been looking for is all these main lake islands, big islands, big sand islands, no weeds on them, no rocks, just sand islands. With the bait fish pushed up on them on these windy days. I've just been driving around looking for bait fish and you've been seeing these nice big parts on the depth finder, ones or two threes at a time. And I just, me and the clients, we just go around and we'll just drop jig wraps on them and the big fish will just come up and crush it. Now let's check in on one of my favorite waters, northern Minnesota's Lake Vermilion. Fishing has been very consistent lately. Fish are setting up in their normal midsummer patterns. Um, your walleye are being found in the 22 to 30 foot range on sand to mud transitional areas. One thing to keep in mind, we are on the tail end of the Mayfly Hatch. There's a lot of food down there for them to eat. Rigging crawlers and leeches on long, light snells has been the ticket as of late. You just gotta keep it in front of their face for a bit. Your smallmouth are being found on your primary and secondary structure. However, your larger smallies I've found um, are coming off your primary points and fingers and stuff like that. Um, larger isolated boulders will usually hold a fish or two. Your musky bite has also been good. Some of my favorite baits to cast at this time of year are big tooth magates, dabs and bullets, and shumway flashers. I find that it's very important to keep switching up your color, your size, your speed, and find out what works for the day, and you should see fish hit the bag. We've been hearing some great reports from our neighbors to the east Wisconsin. Let's check in and see what's going on. We're still chasing smallmouth bass primarily. Uh, the fish are transitioning into their post-spawn, uh, kind of early summer feed. Uh, they're chasing bait fish, uh, lake shiners primarily. Uh, they're starting to transition from their shallow spots to their summer holes and out here summer holes are, are steep drops, uh, deep weeds, uh, places where current sweeps around another spot. Uh, kind of the elephant in the room right now is the hex hatch that's happening all over the Midwest obviously. But out here luckily it kind of happens in stages, different parts of the bay warm up at different times thus the bugs come off in different places within the bay. Uh, I like to find the places that they're not coming off obviously. Um, or the places where the fish are actively chasing bait. 
Now let's take it west and check in on the bite in South Dakota. The bite's changed a bunch over the last week. We still have a good shallow bite up in the Morrow River where you can go through quite a few fish in a day, 40, 50 fish a day. Um, a lot of them fish are sub 15 inches. Um, get out on the main lake, you gotta grind and move around a lot. You can pick up some good fish. It seems like there's more overs now, but it's more of a grind also. So bottom bouncers and smileys, uh, pro tackle propellers still dominate most days. Um, you know, Lindy rigs and leeches and stuff out on the long points and uh, maybe a creek chub here and there, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. You do see, a, like I said, there's a lot more big fish and they're healthy big fish. They're heavy, 22 inch or a weigh right close to five pounds a lot of times. So it's, uh, it's a little different. The heat makes it a little bit more of a struggle. So get out there early in the morning and get after it, but uh, give us a shout at wahewings.com. Take care, everybody. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack, cargo trunk, bucket caddy. Jaws of Ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy. Fishing game boards and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel Outdoors. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. And now it's time for our cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. We're talking river fishing. We're going to start with this Richter Anchor by Greenfield. What's nice about this, you can see this, these two little rings right there. So you set the anchor, the anchor pins down. A lot of times if you're fishing in a river, you're fishing around wood and timber. So this pins down, maybe you can't pull it back out. So you move the boat to the other side, you just kind of reverse it. This spins around like that and you can easily pull this out. This is the Richter Anchor by Greenfield. A good fillet knife is always nice to have. Here's one from CUDA. This is titanium bonded. It's going to last a long time. Got a nice handle, a nice holder right here. Uh, the titanium bonding actually makes it three times harder than steel, so it's going to last a long time. Check it out from CUDA. Northland Tackle makes some fantastic jigs, as you know, and specifically for fishing in current. Their current cutter jig series is really good. Different colors, different sizes. Probably the best way to fish them on like uh, soft plastics like this, uh, this impulse swim bait. And also from Northland Tackle, the thumper jig, thumper spin jig, and the whistler jig. A couple different options with little blades on there for a little bit different presentation. All are available from Northland Tackle. If you're bait fishing for cats, well, you need a good hook, and VMC makes some awesome ones. The octopus style hooks, tournament circle hooks. If you're fishing for like big flatheads, you know, a bigger six odd hook, smaller fish, uh, relatively smaller, <laughs> I should say, a uh, four odd hook, like this tournament circle is really good. And then having a no roll sinker, this is really key when you're fishing in fast current, moving water, you don't want a sinker that's gonna roll and tumble with the water. So these flat sided no roll sinkers are really good to have in your tackle box. You know, a few sizes, one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, four ounce, will work just fine. St. Croix makes some great rods for catfishing, specifically the Mojo Cat Series. They have both bait casting and spinning models available. This, in fact, uh, won the 2016 Field and Stream Best Cat Rod, come in different sizes and different lengths as well. Check it out from St. Croix Rod, the Mojo Cat Series. 
And crankbaits are always important, you know, for uh, multi-species fishing. Bagley makes some awesome ones in the balsa shad, smaller sizes, like the five all the way up to an eight. You can cast these, you control these. You're fishing in clear water, uh, maybe some more natural colors like crayfish and perch, stained water, you know, chartreuse, bright blue, bright purple, like that work just fine. From Bagley, the balsa shad series. Another great option are rattle baits. This is from Viper Custom Tackle. Now these are actually Rapala rip and wraps, but they come in custom colors. Some really, really wild different designs depending on what kind of water you want to fish. There's some purple chartreuse and like this one here with the different spots and that's pretty cool. That's from Viper Custom Tackle. Braid is great for catfishing because they're a strong fish, but also having like a brighter colored braid as sort of a strike indicator is also important. Um, not only for the strength of the braid, you know, 30 pound, even up to 80, depending on the size of the fish, but with that brighter colored braid, you can see when they're nibbling on the bait and you know when to set the hook. And lastly, from Frog Talks, the Hellbender Waders. Frog Talks really makes some affordable gear that's extremely durable and very reliable. This Hellbender series here, you have an adjustable wading belt right here. The suspenders easily adjust. You have these waterproof zipper pockets on the front, as well as a small pocket on the inside for valuables. The boots are awesome. They have good grip. The seams nice and waterproof, very durable, very strong from Frog Togs to Hellbender waders. All these products are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm store, also online at fleetfarm.com. And right now, it's time for our technique of the week. You know, depth of water in a small river like this is sort of relative. In some rivers, four to five foot might be actually a deep hole. In this particular river, it's about seven to eight foot are the deeper holes. And that's where it's gonna concentrate the fish, particularly if you have, as you can see here, we got a lot of cover here, wood. See how you got that little bow in the line? That's perfect with that two ounce sinker. It's keeping me pinned. One thing with catfishing, you don't want the bait floating around. You want to, when you're, anytime you're fishing for catfish situations, you want to lean on the heavy versus going light. You want the, the bait to be pinned to the bottom. And then what I do is a lot of times I cast the bait out, let it pin it to the bottom and then back off. You can see I put just a slight bow in the line like this, drop the rod tip back and you can really distinguish bites with this bright color line. This is 30 pound siege. And boy, you can, when usually when the fish hits it, it'll jump up. Got him. Got him, boy, Jim. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, man, whoa, kicking wow. your butt. No, not yet. There we go. <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just dunk it? Well, yeah, boy, he just drilled it. You know, we're actually in central Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes. The other thing that we have a lot of is rivers. Hey, on next week's show, we're talking the state of bass fishing today. That's going to be a good one. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. And be sure to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com. All of our current guide reports are there. We also have tips, tactics, articles to help you catch fish right now. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you next week. This week's Buzz by Report. Tony Road. Brian Rosal. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bath like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakoya. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week. <laughs>